friends! Welcome to Stay Stitching. My name is Carla. Today I am here to, and I, I have to go ahead and say on the out, right at the beginning, I'm sorry I don't have Carly here today. I promise the next time we are together we will film something else. She was a big hit. She's a darling kid and I loved being able to film with her. But she does not live here in my town so I don't get to be with her all the time sad for me too. So I am here to talk to you today about what I made in July and what I plan to make in August. And I'm going to try to be as concise as possible. Um, I do go on and I'm going to work on that so that you guys don't have to sit there for 26 minutes. So what did I do in July? This part's going to be very, very quick because you've seen most of it. So the first thing I made every view of the Love Notions Harmony blouse, so four of those. The second thing, this is a holdover plan from May, and I announced in my May plans that I was going to make this, and I didn't get it done in May, and I didn't get it done in June, but I got it done in July, and I'm wearing it right now. Um, and I have some pictures, some full length pictures that I will put at the end of the video. And um, this is a Kona Bay cotton. I think, uh, I'm not sure Kona Bay is still in business, but it's a beautiful cotton. It's very smooth. It's not sheer at all. I believe that Kona Bay is or was a quilting cotton. And um, this one I loved for the tea house dress because of the Asian flair of this dress, of this pattern, I mean, and of this dress. And so I really thought they went well together without, you know, maybe being too predictable. So um, there are beautiful metallic gold prints all over the dress. And I assume that those will slowly start to fade and wash out over time but um, it's really pretty right now. So I enjoyed making this. The fabric was easy to work with. This is not perfect. Um, I would say that this dress is good for, a, oh, they have intermediate down here. And I was gonna kind of say that, but then I thought maybe I was being a little too wimpy. Um, there's just some things that are a little bit fiddly that you have to get together. Like for instance, your sleeve and your cuff have to be the exact same size so that they can fit together. And the way that you do that is after you've sewn your side seam and your shoulder seam and when you get to the step to add the cuff, you have to kind of put it on and make sure they're the same size. And if they're not, this is before you sew your seam down here in your cuff. If they're not, you have to make sure that this seam makes these two fit together perfectly. Well. I got them just about perfectly the first time on both. I only did them once. But I can see how that would be a real problem area for um, someone who has not done a lot of sewing because all of those little estimations and things are difficult. And then, I don't know, you know, kimono sleeves, taking that, you know, getting that underarm part, that can be a little difficult. I'm trying to think, I don't really remember that there was a lot of other really difficult stuff, but this dress does have a lot of steps. It's got this inset um, that goes down to, that goes all the way. So th there's a front panel here, this front panel. This front panel is two pieces. So the skirt part starts right here. And so you sew them to, it's, Anyway, and then there's um, two other pieces for the front and one piece for the back. The back is folded, uh, cut on the fold. And there's a box pleat in the back. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. But there's a box pleat in the back and that also might be confusing. Um, so how Seven's instructions are really good. Um, I didn't ever really get lost in the making of this and uh, I would highly recommend this pattern. Um, yeah, I really liked it. So fun to sew. 
And then my last make, well, this was my last make, but the make before this was a pattern test, my very first pattern test. And that pattern was very fun and very quick and very easy to sew. And it's interesting, you know, when it's released, I'll give you more detail about this, but here's what I will say, because I found this kind of a little bit of an epiphany. When I first saw the, the pattern, um, I told my husband, I said, I'll make this because I signed up and I, I'm going to follow through, but I'm going to hate it. I'm going to have to wear Spanx with it and it's going to look awful on me. And so I begrudgingly made it and I put it on and it does not look awful. And I was really surprised. And so my takeaway from that is that sometimes we just don't know everything. You know, I mean, you think you know your figure and you think you know what's going to look good on you. Well, I have definitely made things that I thought were going to be very flattering and that turned out to be not very flattering. I don't think this dress is particularly flattering on me. Do I like it? Yes. Is it comfortable? Yes. Will it be perfect to wear to teach? Absolutely. Um, today I'm wearing some really cute shoes, but they're comfortable enough um, to wear through the school day. And if I didn't want to wear these, they're kind of gold um, sandals, uh, wedges, and um, I have plenty of other shoes that are even more comfortable than this that I could wear. And so I'm gonna wear this dress. I feel like I'll get a lot of wear out of it. I really love the neckline. I think the neckline is absolutely gorgeous. So again, my takeaway from that pattern testing is go ahead and try new things. You might be surprised. And it's, it really got me thinking because what is that sew your style? Is that what it's called? Where every month you, there's a pattern picked out for you and you make it? Well, I think this is the second year that I've been aware of it, and I did not participate last year because I thought every single one of those patterns would look hideous on me. I looked at them and I was like, there is no way. There's not anything in here that I will make. This one might have been in there. I don't know. But there was like maybe one pattern that I would even consider making. And the same thing for this year. I looked at those patterns and I was like, oh, mm -mm, no, nothing in there for me. Um, that none of those will look good on me none of those patterns and you know they won't fit my life and I don't want to make any of them maybe next year I will have the nerve to join and actually try some things that are outside of my comfort zone and I know that that's one of the things that you're supposed to be doing with so my style but when you have preconceived notions of what looks good on you and you look at those patterns and you think no, then you might not join. So maybe you've done the same thing. I don't know. Maybe just me. So my August plans. First thing that I already have um, in progress, it's all cut out. Um, this is another Love Notions pattern. This um, Allegro pants and shorts. Now this is the tinsel the, I think it's called Santa Barbara Tinsel. It's in the store. It's beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. The color is just gorgeous. And um, I wanted to make the skirt out of this, but I decided that it was too sheer. I have a cat that really wants in. It was too sheer. Go to the cat door, you silly goose. He's like, but mom, you're right there. So anyway, I decided, I mean, I wanted to make the pants. I'm losing my mind. I wanted to make the pants, but I decided it was too sheer for pants. It's not too sheer for skirts, especially not a maxi skirt like this. So that's what I'm making. I'll make sure I let you know. This next one. Hi, girly. This next one is a holdover from May. And so I said in my May plans that I was going to make this out of this fabric and I never did it. And I'm going to do it in August because this is a beautiful fabric. I love rayon and this will be perfect to wear for quite a little while yet. Um, we have uh, we have nice weather all the way up through the end of September and even into October. We only break out the boots and the sweaters because we want to wear our boots and our sweaters. Not necessarily because um, the weather requires that we have boots on. So 
going to make that one. And then this one, I want to make the top. This is um, 1166, and I already made the skirt. I think I made that in June. I think that was a June make. And I was looking for a pure white, and I, I was having a hard time finding anything in white. I finally found this, which is super pretty. This is Eyelet. And I think, I think I'm going to make it out of this, but I also pulled this. I think the eyelet would be much more versatile, but I do love this, and I can't remember, did I write down how many yards? I think about have about three yards of this, so there's plenty to do something, either that blouse or something else with, but let me know in the comments section what you think. Um, I'm leaning towards the white eyelet because I really do think that that would be cute in that top. Um, pattern but I also think this would otherwise I wouldn't have pulled it but anyway there's that the next thing is simplicity 1277 this is an amazing fit pattern and I have enough of this gray cotton to make the sleeveless version I was kind of thinking that with a slip and tights that this could be a year-round dress. I could wear it with tights and black boots or booties um, in the winter or um, little clogs. I have, you know, some of those cute clogs that everybody wears and, you know, wear this all year round. And so it's not a super lightweight cotton. Um, I think this might be a quilting cotton. I suspect that it is a Michael Miller quilting cotton it, I bought it at the exact same time that I bought the, um, the big white polka dots that I made the skirt out of with the red buttons. And that's what I think this is. And it's a little too heavyweight. Like, I don't think it would work for this dress because the kimono sleeves wouldn't lie right. But this dress is much more structured. And it doesn't have a full skirt. And so I think these two will go well together and then I will wind up with a year round dress. And this one has a full back on it. There's no cutout in the back or anything. And that'll give me some practice making the sleeveless version um, to maybe gear up for putting in um, a contrast fabric there. I'm just gonna do it all out of this. And then my last piece, now, I do have some other things, some other plans brewing, um, and I guess we've established that I don't always follow my plans anyway, so no one would be surprised if all this doesn't get done. Um, I'm like that kid, you know, in Little League, in the outfield, who's supposed to be watching the ball and all that other stuff that you're supposed to do when you're playing baseball, but instead he's squatted down and he's watching ants. Oh yeah, that's me. I could totally go out there and watch ants with that kid instead of doing what I'm supposed to do and watch the ball. Uh, because ants are way more interesting than balls, if you ask me. But my last pattern is this one. I've already made three of the views from this pattern. And the one that I want to make is this one right here. With that lace inset. See, you can see it on the model. It's this one and this one. Now, I have lost the lace that I intended to use with this. I don't know how. I looked in my fabric. I have a lot of fabric and I looked as best I could, you know, but when we started Mayfield Fabric, I cleaned out a wall of fabric and I bought new shelves and um, I'm keeping Mayfield Fabric separate from my fabric. Um, and, you know, the Mayfield fabric is all covered um, in dust cloths and everything because we do have cats and I know people have allergies. And I don't know what I've done with all of my fabric. And so um, what I wanted to put in here, I wanted to quit yammering on, Carla. Finish the sentence. This is our jersey that we have in the store and I love it. This is a beautiful silvery gray. And um, it is, 
It's 95% cotton, 5% spandex, and that is a mix that I really like. If you get 100% cotton, wow, it's raining. I don't know if you could see out the patio. If I could move the camera, I would, but I'll never get it focused again. But um, no wonder Zane wanted in so badly. He knew it was about to start raining. Um, and it is... Yes, I probably have adult attention deficit disorder. Probably. Um, that's why I'm such a good ESS teacher, because the kids and I, we are simpatico. I have the same attention span that they do. Uh, this is 58 inches wide. It is 95% cotton. It's 5% spandex. I really like this because although I love the feel of 100% cotton, it can tend to bag out and lose its shape. Whereas with just this much spandex in it, um, you get all, you get 95% of the joy of cotton and you get just 5% of that spandex, which really works beautifully to um, help keep everything together. So I'm gonna, see this little flange on here? I'm gonna double the size of that flange so that it's a little bit more coverage for work. I will wear sleeveless things to work. And I know a lot of women, when they, you know, gain weight, they're too embarrassed to wear sleeveless things. But the way I look at it, those are my arms. It's not like they're hideous. They don't look like they did when I was 25, but neither does anything else on my body. So if anyone's insulted by my arm showing, I kind of think that that's their problem and not mine. Um, and I will wear cute clothes that are sleeveless. And, um, but I thought I might make that flange a little bit bigger. Now, since I can't find the white lace, the stretch lace that I was gonna put in there, which I'm gonna look again, because I think it'd be super cute. This is what I pulled. This is a beautiful kind of, this might be too heavy. This is a rib knit jersey. And I was thinking that would go, if they go beautifully. And that's what I was thinking I would throw in there. But now that I've really felt this, this might be too heavy for that. So this might be a back to the drawing board, but I really do like the hem on this view. I think it's really pretty. And um, so that, that's it. Those are my plans for August. And we do go back to school soon. We go back to school, um, teachers go back to school on Monday and students go back to school the following Monday, the 13th. So, um, Will I be able to get all of that done? I hope so, you know, if I do some sewing after school and, and all of that. So I hope that you're planning on filming a June or July plan. And if you don't make YouTube videos, would you please tell me in the comment section what you're planning to make or how your makes went for July? I would love to hear how they went and what you liked, maybe what you didn't like. And also, what are you planning for August? Have you begun doing any fall sewing or are you still in full summertime mode? Let me know. And thanks for stopping by. I look forward to seeing you again here soon.